I'm Hazuki, I'm an inline figure skater and a figure skater, and today I wanted to talk about frequently asked questions about inline skates. Isn't it such a pretty intro? I'm gonna show you guys how I did it next week, but this week I really wanted to get this video out. It is frequently asked questions about inline skates. So I have a list of 15 or so questions that we are going to go through today. It is my most frequently asked questions in the comments. It is what I'm asked the most in my DMs. And I also asked you guys on my Instagram story about what questions you guys wanted me to answer. Sadly, I didn't get to do everyone's questions. Uh, some of them are a little bit more specific after you get the skates. And I figured what would be most helpful for everyone would be a basic beginner's guide to inline skates. So without further ado, the first question I get asked a fair bit is, am I too old to start? Easy answer is no. There is a long answer, sadly. Um, if you are super duper young or if you're super duper old, you need to be a lot more careful about injuries. So you may have tougher joints or less flexibility or maybe you're not going to spring back from a sprain as quickly. So you need to be a lot more careful about how you skate. You should be wearing protective gear at all times and you might want to think about getting a coach. But generally, no, you're never too old to start. There's no age limit to skating. Because it's a pretty intense sport, there's a little bit of a barrier in terms of physicality of getting into skating. But generally, you're never too old to start. Do I need a coach? Hmm. So, this is a tough question. I am self-taught, but I did take Can Skate, which is Canadian Learn to Skate. I think it's a very valuable kind of class to take. Just because you'll learn how to do basic glides, basic strokes, basic backwards, basic crossovers, and then how to fall, which is probably the most important thing you can learn how to do. And it's really hard to pick up those skills properly when you're doing it by yourself. There's a reason why I don't do basic, basic, basic skating stuff on this channel, and it's because I'm genuinely afraid of teaching it wrong, and then people consequently not being able to skate properly as they move on to higher levels. So I think it's very, very, very important to learn how to skate properly with a coach, preferably. I also understand that skating is an extremely expensive sport, and so not everyone can afford a coach. And I am one of those people, I'm a broke university student, I can't afford a coach. But I really do believe in the importance of learning how to do basics properly. So if you can, please get a coach, especially for the beginning. If you can't, just be extremely careful and take advice from people you trust, rather than just strangers on the internet. Asterisk here, I understand parasocial relationships are very powerful, because I've been in several myself, actually a lot. Everything you see on the internet about skating, take it with a grain of salt because you never know what kind of certifications these people have. I don't have any certifications. I'm just a skater trying to figure it out by myself and I figured that I'd show you guys how I figured it out. I'm never saying that this is the best way of doing it. It's just my way of doing it. Be very mindful about the parasocial relationships you start creating with online coaches. Okay, so you've decided that you want to get inline skates. What are the first steps? Well, I have a video up here about the different kinds of inline frames. The video is a little bit outdated because I filmed it in July. Some manufacturers have opened again. I believe Golden Horse has released a new line. I think also Rollline released a new frame. It's a little bit outdated, but the basic information is kind of correct. I might be making a corrections video later on, kind of going over everything that's changed since that video. Generally, that's a solid resource to check out. Once you decide which kind of frames you're going to get, uh, the next question is, where do I get them? You're going to want to find the manufacturer website for the frames that you want to buy. So say you want to get Snow White skates, because that's the kind that I have. You're going to go to inlineskating.com, and you're going to look at the manufacturer's list of distributors. Now, in that list, it's generally by country, and you want to find your own country. I live in Canada. As of when I bought my skates, there were three different people that sold Snow White frames in Canada. Next, what you want to do is look through each distributor and check if they're reputable people or not and then you want to buy from them instead of buying from a different country. That way you avoid all the tariffs and the import taxes, which I think are the same thing, and shipping costs and conversion rates and this and that, and you'll be able to avoid unnecessary additions to the cost. Because inline frames are already crazy expensive. Should I get indoor wheels or outdoor wheels? You can get both. Changing wheels only takes about five or 10 minutes. So you can get both depending on where you're going to be skating. This is very specific to each skater, so I personally have outdoor wheels because I don't really have many places indoors that I can skate and I knew that buying my frames. I tend to skate a lot on tennis courts and pavement and parking lots and roads. So I got outdoor frames so that I wouldn't ruin the wheels immediately. But this is very dependent on where you're going to be skating. Can I change my ice boot into a roller boot? So, 
Fun fact, this boot is actually secondhand. It used to be someone's figure skate boot, and then I bought the boot without the blade on it, and I got a figure skate tech to mount my frames onto them. This was actually the first time he'd seen inline frames. He was really interested. The short answer is yes. The long answer is you should probably get someone that's qualified to do it. I know you have to fill in the holes that the last frames or the last blades put into the sole, and you also need to make sure that it's aligned properly. There are instructions generally on how to do that when you get your blades, but it's fairly cheap to get a professional to mount it for you, and it's going to avoid a lot of issues later on in terms of the blade being misaligned or not mounted properly or falling off or whatever. So get a skate tech to do it, but yes, you can change your ice boot into an inline boot. Now, don't keep going back and forth because that's going to wear out the sole eventually and also that's going to put a lot of strain onto the sole of the boot and the heel and you don't really want to do that. So once you change the frames once or twice, you want to designate the boot as an inline boot and nothing else. So now your frames are ordered, you've gotten your boots figured out, and the next step is waiting for them to ship in. While you're waiting for them to ship, the next question I get a fair bit is should I do off-ice exercises while I wait? You can if you want to, you don't have to, especially if you're just beginning, then you might be working a fair bit on stroking and just moving forwards and backwards first, so you're not really going to need much flexibility for that. If you're a higher level, then you're probably already doing off-ice anyways. Personally, I enjoy doing off-ice, I really like doing jumps and spins and stretches, but it's very dependent on your specific situation. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. If you want to, then go for it. If you're looking for some resources on where to go for off-ice, sofa bar, Coach Michelle Hong, ISU Keep Training, that series started when COVID began, and it's honestly one of my favorites. It's an hour-long exercise, and there's probably about a dozen different ones that are specific to stretching, or jump rotation, or spins, or off-ice in skates, and things like that, that are very, very helpful. Coach Mary is great, Coach Hamish on Instagram is wonderful, I Skate Coach. There's a lot when you start looking for them. You can if you want to, you don't have to. What should I buy to prepare for my inline skates getting here? The big one here is protection. So you want to make sure you have elbow guards, wrist guards, and knee guards. That is because when you fall in inline skates, you are going to get hurt. When you fall on ice, sometimes you don't get hurt, and that's great. When you fall on inline, especially the first few hours, you're almost guaranteed to get hurt unless you have protection. Uh, I've got some nasty scrapes on my legs, I got some nasty scrapes on my hands, I got some nasty scrapes on my elbows, and a lot of that can be avoided if you have the proper protection. Also, if you're really new to skating, I would recommend getting a helmet. You gotta protect your noggin. <laughs> and especially if you're younger or older, making sure that you protect your head is very, very important. Wrists, elbows, knees, joints are really important as well. Also, depending on the climate, I might wear thicker clothes. So I have a specific pair of jeans. Actually, it's these jeans that I specifically wear for skating because they already have holes in the knees that I put there because I was skating. <laughs> and the jean material has a better chance of protecting me when I fall sideways and scrape my calf or my thigh on the pavement. If you're skating indoors, you're a lot more likely to get like friction burns than actual like road rash. I would assume there's also specific kinds of clothing that you want to wear in that case. I don't know what they are, so you'll have to, you'll have to test around a little bit, but generally you want hard guards that will protect your joints and your head. While we're talking about things you can also buy, I would recommend skate leashes just because they're very helpful both for carrying your skates and for stretching, and I like having them around. It's also super duper cheap. I talk about it in this video up here, and it's very, very helpful to have. Okay, so now you've gotten your frames, they're mounted by a professional, and you finally get to start skating. This is super exciting, so what do you do now? Well, the first thing you should start with when you get them, I know you're excited, is to do stroking and is to go backwards and forwards and crossovers and edges. I know they're boring, I hate doing them, but they're very, very important skills to have. You're gonna start noticing all the different changes between ice and inlines. If you're feeling up to it, maybe you can start doing some three turns and some brackets and counters. If you're really, really feeling up to it, I guess, <laughs> maybe a spiral, but you want to understand how your weight transfers across the three wheels and you want to understand how it differs between ice and inline. If you're higher level, you might want to start doing singles jumps or a waltz jump or maybe a two foot spin, but don't do too much just because you have a high likelihood of getting hurt if you're not used to inlines yet. Where do I place my toe stops? That's a wonderful question. I have a video of it already up here and also how to replace them. The placement of your toe stop is pretty important to being able to skate properly. So this is something you're going to want to take care of as soon as you get your skates or like within the first hour of wearing them. That way you can start building up good habits with the toe stop in the right place. Again, it's fairly different between people. Uh, I like to keep mine 
around where it is right now. Um, so that's not helpful at all, is it? How do I do wheel maintenance? I have a video for that up here. It's fairly easy. The video took me 10 minutes to film, but it usually takes me like 7 minutes to do it. Or I'll watch Netflix while doing it, and then it'll take me 10 minutes. Um, it's super duper easy. I teach you how to rotate your wheels, how to take apart the wheels, how to do basic maintenance, and a couple other things. How do I stop? Whew, that's a tough one. Okay, so the issue is a lot of stops require you to wear down your wheels fairly quickly or your toe stop fairly quickly. My favorite stop is the one where you kind of go around in circles until you slow down enough <laughs> because it doesn't wear down on your hardware as much. And I like to try to prolong the life of my wheels and my toe stop as much as I can. Uh, if you're just starting out, I would recommend maybe a T-stop or dragging your toe stop across the ground. That way you slow down with a lot of control. The downside of that being you wear down your hardware a lot. This is the biggest question I get. Do inline frames feel the same as ice? Mm, that's a really, really hard question to answer. The short answer is yes and no. I'm gonna explain myself. <laughs> so, no, it doesn't feel the same as ice. But it does. Um, I'd like to think of it as figure skating adjacent in the sense that it's kind of close to skating, but it's not exactly. My favorite thing to do on ice is spins. I love spins so much. If you look at my Instagram, you probably know that I love spins so much. And inline spins don't feel the same. Uh, your weight is in a different spot. You don't get to spin as much. It's a lot harder to do variations on types of spins. Sit spins are crazy hard because you have no weight whatsoever on your heel. And that can be pretty disappointing. Um, I think some people might not expect that to happen. And it's really disappointing when you can't do the things that you could do on ice in inlines. However, with rinks closing due to it, and the summer, and other situations where the rinks are closing, it's nice to have something that kind of feels like skating. One of my favorite things to do on inlines is to skate on roads. If you look at my Instagram, there's some really pretty shots of me skating down this beautiful country road, and that's not something I could do on ice skates. On ice skates, I usually look at inside of an ugly rink, or maybe I'm outside on a pond, but it's not great ice. But with inlines, you can skate practically anywhere that there's a hard surface, which is extremely freeing, and it's a wonderful feeling. So it's different in the sense that you can't do things in the same way that you can on inlines, but you have a lot more freedoms, and as long as you modify elements, you can do practically everything on inlines anyways. There's pros and cons to each type of skating. One of the pros of inline skating is you can skate practically anywhere, and it's absolutely stunning if you can. You know, you have these beautiful shots of people skating in sunsets, and people skating in parks, and people skating in these beautiful, beautiful places that you wouldn't get when you're skating on ice. There's pros and cons. It's, it's a hard balance, just because you expect one thing and you get something adjacent to it, but it's not the same. But you kind of got to look on the bright side as well. There's things that you never would have been able to experience had you not had inlines. So like I say, it's figure skating adjacent. It's not the same, it's not that different, it's adjacent. <laughs> not helpful, I know. Hi, this is Editing Hazuki here to tell you that I completely forgot to answer one more question. Another question that I get fairly often is, can you move things that you learned on inlines onto ice? Like I said, because inline skating is figure skating adjacent, the answer is a little bit iffy. Short answer is yes, I've learned all my jumps and most of my elements on inlines before moving them onto ice because I have a lot more access to inline skating than ice skating. However, because it's adjacent and not exactly the same, it does feel different and it takes a little bit of an adjustment period to get used to one or the other. Short answer is yes, you can learn things on inlines and move them onto ice later. Uh, finally, some general advice for you. If you are new to skating and you don't have a coach, I would recommend checking out this video. It talks about things that you can do to help improve the productivity of your practices. If you already skate or already have a coach, then these are probably not tips that are going to help you much because you know this stuff. But these are all things that I had to learn on my own that really helped me. Be careful of parasocial relationships that you're making with people online. This is just in general, but also within skating just because skating is such a high risk sport. I hope these answered a lot of your questions. If you have any more questions, you can leave them down below. You can email them to me, or you can ask me in my Instagram DMs. I'm here to help you. However, I'm not a coach. I don't have any qualifications. I barely graduated can skate. I just know that there's a lot of people out there right now who are trying to figure this out. I don't really have that many people to ask. So hopefully this helped you. I really hope it did. Um, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.